Hi everybody. Welcome back to Mediocre Whiskey Review. I'm Jill. Um, we're doing something different today, so stick around with us. All right, everybody. So I'm going to do something today that I said I was never going to do, but whatever, we're going to try something different. As you can tell, my glass is very empty. Um, I bought a new bottle and I have not opened it yet. I'm going to fling this around and drop it. Um, I haven't opened it yet. Um, it's not, it's not a rare bottle. It's not anything uh, special or anything, but I figured I would try uncorking and see how that goes. Now, I hate uncorking whiskeys because I struggle. <laughs> so well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. But what I got today is the Michter's small batch. Um, just the, the Kentucky straight bourbon. Um, nothing, nothing particularly special about it, but I keep seeing it every time I go to the liquor store. So I finally said, well, let's try it. I have not had, <clears throat> excuse me. I have not had any of the Michter's line so i i have no idea what to expect i did a tiny bit of research on it um this is 91.4 proof so it's not super high proof um their website said that it is batched it is very small batch um it is batched in a holding tank that holds no more than 20 full barrels so that's that's a pretty small batch right um I also read that they do heat cycling with their barrels, so they, they make it hot, they make it cold, whatever. Um, that way the whiskey goes in and out of the wood. Um, so that's kind of cool too. Um, I've seen lots of, lots of people talking about, of course, the higher end um, of this line, which, you know, the toasted barrel, the 10 year, the barrel proof. Um, I have never seen any of those out. So I, the liquor store I go to has this one has the sour mash and it has the rye. So, you know, those may end up in my inventory soon. We'll see, I don't know. Um, also, if you would draw your attention to my, my new sign, I found this, I fell in love with it, so <laughs> I bought it. All right, so we're gonna try to open this and it's probably gonna be embarrassing and it's whatever. Luckily, there is only the, the paper on the top, but we'll see. Oh, this one's gonna be easy, that's great. All right, here we go. Maybe. See, this is why I don't do this. Oh, but that was a nice sound though, right? That was so good. Um, and like, one of the things that always drew my attention to this bottle was the color of it. Um, I really, as you know, I love the color of bourbon. So, um, usually I let it sit in my glass for, for a little while before, um, before I sip it, but we're not doing that today. We're just diving right in. We're, we're going for it. We're going to see what happens. Okay, so the nose is giving lots of vanilla. Um, there's almost like an apple. Um, there's there's some fruit in there that is super intriguing, and I don't I don't think I've ever smelled apple in a whiskey before, so maybe it's not. But it's very sweet. There's a little bit. It smells. Um, it smells a little young and I, I say that because some of the younger ones that I've had, what I, what I pull off of it is like the Big League Chew bubble gum, the old powdery, you know, terrible bubble gum, but I get just a hint of that. Like it's not super strong, but, um, but it is there. Now I did read, and this was not on their website, this was on somebody else's, um, review, you know, you go to Google and you type things in and then it pops up with all these questions and it said, how old is Michter's small batch? So I clicked on it and it said, 
that it was approximately well, rumored to be eight years old. So I don't know if there's any validity to that whatsoever, but that's really, it's really opening up quite a bit actually. Um, like that big league chew is going away, but the vanilla, the caramel, that is, that's super heavy on this nose. So I hope, I hope the palette is the same. We're gonna find out. So first sip, there's, it, it comes in heavy with some, some spice, but it, it is not overpowering at all. And again, first sip, so really, does the first sip even count at all? I don't think so. I think, you know, like you take that one and you just kind of throw it away and then you try again. Now that came in super strong with some brown sugar, some vanilla. There is still that spice there. There's a little bit of that heat on my tongue. It's, but it's playing really well with everything else that's happening. I really, I really want to get this, this apple like that I had on the nose. I really want to taste the apple, but it's not happening so far. We'll see. Wow, that nose is just opening up more and more. Um, which I think is just super cool. And here's a debate for y'all. Um, I, I don't know if I believe it or not. I think sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But how do we feel about the neck pour? Everybody says, you know, oh, the neck pour is awful. It's terrible. Once you get past the neck pour, everything's gray or whatever. Um, but I have a hard time buying into this. Because like, if this were full, and then you just kind of go like, now you have a whole different neck pour, right? Maybe I'm insane, but I just, I think, I think the neck pour is, I think it's a myth. I think it's an old bourbon legend. I don't know, but I don't really think it's a thing. So I'm saying there's no such thing. And that was so interesting while I'm flapping my jaws over here. Um, there was some oak and it was like, I smelled a leather jacket. Like somebody, like the Fonz just walked in here wearing his leather jacket. I don't know. I think this is really good. This is, um, and I didn't say, I think I, I picked this up for like $45. I think I saw MSRP was anywhere from 40 to 50. So, um, I feel good about the price. I'm okay with that. And I, I've shied away from these because I, a long time ago, somebody had told me, no, those are garbage. You don't want those. Um, I'm actually very impressed with this because the, you know, I, I've had it in my head that, no, nope, we don't want these. We want, we want the higher end things, which who does it right. But, uh, this is actually very pleasant and I know that you can't see it, but it is, it's running down that glass that now the glass makes it look like it's a little more oily than what it feels on the palate, but, um, it's got a nice mouthfeel. It is pleasant. There is not much to the finish. It's, you know, I mean, it, it's pretty much gone once you, once you swallow it. But, um, I think for, for a daily sipper, like this is, I, I would do it. Yeah, I would sip on it and I will sip on it some more. Um, because again, this is, this is like weird for me tasting a whiskey for the first time um, on video. It's just not something I've ever done before, so that's kind of it's kind of new, and it's kind of cool. I think I think, but I'm that person that once I get a bottle, 
Like, I'm, I'm gonna go home and open it. I need, I need to open it and I need to taste it. So, this probably won't happen very often. That is really pleasant. So I'm, as, as it opens up and I taste more and more, it's kind of coming away from the caramel vanilla, but it's brown sugar. And then there's a, just a hint of oak and kind of a leathery. It's not, it's not as strong on the palate as it was in that sniff that I took. Um, but there's definitely like some oak, some leather, um, maybe slightly smoky, but not, not terrible. Um, but I can't, there's not anything I can say bad about this whiskey, except for one thing. And it is, it's not the whiskey's fault. Well, it kind of is because whatever, but, um, it's, it's kind of drying. So like it, it leaves your mouth feeling very, very dry. Um, I can't say very, but it is, it's drying. Um, not one of my favorite qualities of certain whiskeys, but the nose on it is phenomenal. Like there is, and it keeps evolving as, as you shake it and or swirl it. And it is, it's a very good nose on it. And the palate also keeps kind of changing, kind of um, evolving as well, which is, which is super cool. And I'm, I really like it, but it does, in my mouth is a little bit dry, which is not my favorite thing, but it doesn't make it bad. So if I had to say one bad thing, that's what I'm going to say. So I'm going to, I'm going to rate this and we are, we are going to rate this. I say we, like there's just a bunch of people here. It's just me. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to, I'm going to give this, I'm going to go a solid eight. Um, I would probably rate it a little bit higher if, if it wasn't for that drying feeling in my mouth. Um, but otherwise I, this is, it's very good. And I'm, I'm super happy that I picked it up. Uh, now I did when I was looking on the website for some different, um, or for some information on it, I, I saw the sour mash, which I, I went back and forth. I didn't know which one to get. I thought, well, we'll try this one first. Uh, so I think I'm definitely going to pick up the sour mash next and give it a try. Um, it just sounds interesting, right? But, um, I, I've been on the lookout for some of the others because if anybody that's watched these long knows, I love the toasted barrels and the double oaked and things like that. And I know Mictors has a toasted, which I will probably never see. Doesn't mean I'm not going to look for it. But this is a very solid pour. I, uh, I highly recommend it if nobody's tried it. And if you've had someone tell you, you know, no, don't get it. It's bad. It's terrible. Um, tell them to, to F off and go try it anyway. But um, I'm very pleased with it. I enjoy it. So I'm rated an eight. And other than that, I'm going to shut up today. Uh, like and subscribe. Check the channel out. Uh, give me some feedback. I did a couple shorts. And I don't, I'm not a tech person. I don't know how to do these things. But I made a couple. Didn't like them. But the posted, whatever. Um, give me some feedback. Let me, let me hear what you think. And uh, I am still... I am still working on the rye situation. I'm gonna get some rye, try them out. But um, until then, you guys take care. Have a beautiful day, and uh, I will see you. I'll see you in about a week. Cheers.